Hey everybody, welcome back to another JBoz Gaming video. Appreciate you uh, j coming back and watching another video. This is your host JBoz, and today we're going to talk about progression of threats uh, in game. And so, in order to do this, what I'm going to do is bring up a uh, screenshot of an in game uh, session, and we're going to talk about uh, kind of how to process the information on this screen. Um, when you're in game, you before the match starts and the timer's running down, there's uh, information you can glean from the main screen. And then of course there's information you can glean from um, the actual, uh, from the actual, uh, uh, you know, kind of player, uh, player screen. So the first thing that you can see in game when the clock is running is the icons up above and you can see which um, tanks are in the match you can also see potentially uh, if there are platoons and who is platooned in this case on this team there is a pl platoon that i am in and that's why it appears yellow on this uh, particular screenshot and then there is a platoon of tank destroyers uh, as well um, on the other team there is a platoon of a medium and a light and a tank destroyer as one platoon and then a platoon of a heavy and a uh, tank destroyer now they do have numbers on these and all this indicates is just generally the number of platoons in the game it's not it's not it doesn't uh, represent anything beyond that so this just means there's one here's the first platoon uh, maybe maybe uh, you know we I think we were obviously the second platoon and then there was a third platoon and a fourth platoon. That's all this means, okay? So um, you can glean that straight off the, uh, the 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 main HUD battle HUD when you when your the counter is running down, your timer is running down to start the match. But you can also hit the double window button and bring up um, the large map. And then if you hit the right bumper, it will hide that uh, big map. And you will see um, a, a more extensive player list uh, as the game, as they're, as the players are logging into the game, and the game is preparing to start. And that's kind of where we're going to start with this information here. Um, as you look at this, and you should look at this every single match. You should try to get into the match and get to this point as quickly as possible, and start to assess these threats in the order that I provide them. Um, so basically, uh, we would look at the list of opponents uh, prior to the start of the battle, and this is how we do it. Here are the opponents that have been uh, logged in. It, of course, gives you the same information here as you see up here. So I would quickly not look at this, and as soon as I'm able to bring up this, I get to this. Because now I can see not just what category the tank is, I can actually see what type of tank it is. The first thing I note when I look at this screen is what tier is it well this is a tier 5 game I'm in a tier 4 tank I'm over here jboz 0303 in my m5a1 Stewart and the first thing that I note is I'm playing up a tier this tells me some tanks are gonna have thicker armor that my gun might not pin I'm gonna have to know where to hit them if I'm gonna use standard ammunition uh, or or AP shells um, otherwise, I might want to switch to APCR uh, right away because if I'm going to encounter these tanks right away, I'm going to have to know that I can pin these tanks as best I can. And so that's the first thing that you note when you uh, look at this screen. Now, I'm going to go through a, quite a list of things that you should be assessing as you begin battle. And when you first start doing this, you won't be able to get through all of these things. And even when you get good at it, you 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 struggle to get through all of these things because there's a very limited amount of time that you have before the match starts. Like in this case, there's seven seconds before the match starts. So you kind of imagine trying to go through 18, 20 different things that I'm going to tell you about. And so that's why I, I give it to you in this order. Um, the things that I mention up front are more important and they get less important as we go. And that's why I call this a kind of progression, a threat progression, because you're trying to start knowing what's the most threatening to you down to maybe the least threatening, but still something you should note. So 
again, the first thing that we're going to look at in this particular situation is that we're playing up to tier five, right? The other thing that I'm going to look for is known players. So I'm going to look at these player names, and I'm going to, and this guy, the reason this is dark, this Dug 3 b I don't know if you can see that or not, he is not even loaded into the match yet. So I don't even, I can't even read his name. So I don't even know if I know this guy, right? But I'm looking down through these names, seeing if I notice anybody specifically that is a known good player to me. Because if you see someone, let's say, for example, you see me on the other side uh, in your match. Well, that's a guy you want to pay attention to. You know he's a decent tanks player. I'm not the best tanks player, but, I, but I, I'm pretty good at the game. And so you're going to want to pay attention to where I am because, um, because I'm a threat to you. I, I definitely will shoot you if I see you on the other team. So, you know, know that the, the, the known players, and you will get to know them as you play the tier, as you play a particular tank over and over again and play it for a little bit, you'll get to know the people that play generally in those categories, and you'll see these names, and you'll start to know, hey, that's a pretty good player. The other way to get to know pretty good players is the end screen. When you win a battle or you lose a battle, look at the other team. Look at who played well on that other team. You can look at your own team, of course, and see who finished first or, or whatever and note the people that are always finishing first. Those are people you want to look for as you begin your battle because those are the players that you want to be aware of because they're going to probably have a pretty good game and you don't want to be one of the victims of, of, of their gun. So, yeah, look for good players. That's the second the second kind of tip here is to really start to look for good players. Then, once I've gotten through all the players list, I quickly go back and I look for anybody that's in a clan. Now, why do I look for people that are in a clan? Well, I, I don't see anybody on the opposing team that's in a clan, so we can look over here. Though they're not threats being on our team, but there's several people in a clan. This guy's in a clan. This guy's in a clan. This guy's in a clan. These guys are in a clan. And not only are they in a clan, they're in a platoon together. And that's the that, that's the next one. But, but right now we're looking at clans. And why I say the clans are kind of the third level is because people that are in a clan generally play this game better. They might share information. They may have learned tips and tricks from one another. They are willing to play with other people. No, they just don't casually platoon, though some do. In general, they are looking to get better at this game. And so clans mean that they take the game a little more seriously. They don't play individually. They like playing as a, a bigger group. And so that can be an indication that they, they have some skill and knowledge in the game. So we look for clans. Then the fourth thing that we look for is platooning. So in this case, we have a couple of platoons. We have this platoon here that has three people in it. And then we have one platoon over here that has two people in it. So it's very good to note, again, people that play with others tend to play better than individuals. So this guy is a no name. We don't know him from anybody. He could be a great player. We just don't know. But we know that he's not in a clan and we know that he's not platooned right now. So we can assume, and maybe wrongly, but fairly percentage wise, that he is less of a threat than these guys that are working together, right, in this battle, okay? Now, I'm not saying that he's not better than them. I'm just saying that they, he's less of a threat individually than, he, than these guys that are potentially going to work together and maybe even be together in the battle, on the battlefield. So let's say I run into the DW on the battlefield, then I can probably assume may, maybe that I, even the, though I don't see him, that somewhere... His buddy, an SU-85B, is hanging around, right? Because usually if you're in a platoon, uh, you're, you're playing with that person. You generally don't separate. Now, some people do, but generally you don't. So that's why understanding the list of threats is important and understanding why they're, they're on that list is also important. Okay, the fifth item, the fifth kind of risk that I start to assess is I identify any high tier tanks that are that are good, right? We 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 right away notice that we're in tier five. So the next thing after I've looked through the list of names, I've looked through the list for clans, and I've looked through the list for platoons, 
I'm also looking now at the high tier tanks. So here at tier five, what tanks in this tier that I know are good tanks? Well, the first thing I think is a captured KV-1 has good armor. He's a pretty good he's a pretty good tank. Uh, this is uh, often played heavy. Um, then you have a Stug 33B, usually has a derp gun, which means that they tend to like to uh, one-shot people. So that's that's here. There's another tank destroyer that has a pretty good gun. Um, I call this the toaster tank. Um, but there's another Stug 33, or sorry, Stug 3G that hasn't spawned in here um, that'll be in the match. Uh, an IKV 103, and then uh, which is a decent tank destroyer. The biggest threat is the Stug 33B because he can he can one shot us in a in a in a M5A1 Stuart, right? We only have 340 hit points, I believe. Um, and so these derp guns can probably take us out pretty quickly. So we kind of want to know that these guys are our biggest threat. And then, of course, there is a French arty also in the game. A fast-firing arty not, doesn't do a lot of damage, but certainly something we want to be aware of because it is an arty and they can shoot you from distance from afar. So we want to know that, hey, we got an arty in the game, so if we're not arty safe, we want to keep moving, make it hard for him to hit us. And so these are the kind of thought processes I go through when I start to assess the top tier. But I don't stop there. The next kind of risk that we want to assess is what are the lower tier tanks that are good, right? What, what tanks do we, you know, maybe not want to face? Well, there's a DW2. He's a heavy. The Needle's a heavy. Both of them have decent armor. The Needle has better armor. But neither one is a huge threat in our M5A1 because we have speed. And if we can get around them, they can't traverse us. So... The needle would be the biggest threat because he could traverse a little bit better, especially if he knows what he's doing. But in general, the heavies are not a real threat to us. Um, now, the 3J, though, whole different matter. He's got pretty good speed and a pretty good gun. Um, so we want to you know, watch out for him, right? Also, he's in a platoon. Well, what's he platooned with? A Luke's. Oh, okay, another fast tank. Um, so you got to watch out for this, right? Then an A20, fast tank. A Martyr 38T, good tank destroyer with uh, pretty good damage. Again, want to watch out for him. He's in a platoon. So look at this. This, this, and this. Three tanks that are pretty good, right, at our tier, that are platooned, that they're playing together. So this is a pretty good threat to us. So we want to watch out for them. Then we could account for some of these other tanks like the Su-85, the M8A1. These are tank destroyers that have do pretty good uh, damage um, and could could do quite damage. So we want to be aware of these. Um, but for the most part, they're, they may not be as high a threat because one, this platoon's bigger than this platoon. Plus this this heavy will probably slow down the Su-85. So if we're approaching their cap, I'll get a little more worried about them. But over here at our cap, I'm not too worried about these guys. So on and on and on, right? The other thing that we look at is the Su-5. Uh, Su so they have two artillery. One's a tier five, one's a tier four, but they're both fast firing artillery. Both of these artillery uh, fire pretty quickly. Now, how do I know this about all these tanks? I'm a genius? Well, possibly, but not really. I just have experience playing against these tanks. And this is what you'll acquire as you start to play this game is this knowledge, right? And if you play at this tier, you will start to learn these tanks, not just th that they're good or bad, but what their strengths and weaknesses are, even their stats, just how good they are, how good they aren't. Uh, how what is the traverse speed of a captured KV-1, right? Can we do the circle of death around him? And the answer is yes. But the captured KV-1, where do we hit him to pin him? It's not the turret like the Bogatier. It's not the main hull armor, right? It's right above his tracks in the middle. Ah, see, these are the types of things that you need to be learning about the different tanks that you will come in, in, in contact with. So... Continue with our threat progression. So we're up to what, six? So we're going to the seventh. The seventh is generally go after high alpha damage tanks. And as I pointed out, there is a lot of high alpha tanks in this match, like the Stug 33B, this uh, toaster tank, this, K, this IKV 103, uh, the 3J, high, high alpha damage tanks, the Martyr 38T, the M8A1. Generally speaking, tank destroyers have higher alpha damage then artillery, then heavies, then mediums, and then lights, generally speaking. Now, you want to know specific tanks because there is a big difference between a T-56, which is a tank destroyer, and let's say, well, uh, that's a Tier 4 tank destroyer, so a T-56 is a lot different than, let's say, a Hetzer, 
with a derp gun on it, right? So uh, one tank I definitely have to know cautiously deal with and be able to maneuver around in order to land shots. And he can also take me out with one shot. The other one is a fast-moving uh, tank destroyer, but doesn't have a very good gun, and he certainly doesn't have the ability to traverse around. If I get around him, he's dead. So uh, I basically consider the T-56 no threat to me at all, where the Hetzer is almost a deadly threat, right? So especially in the hands of a good player, the Hetzer is a very good tank. So th the knowledge of the tank, not just the, the, the category of the tank, is important, but generally speaking, in that order that would be your threat progression is tank destroyers, artillery, heavies, mediums, and lights. Now, does that mean you rush down to the other end of the map to try to kill the artillery? No, not necessarily. Remember our general tips and tricks uh, on how to become a better World of Tanks player? Be patient. When given the opportunity and you are able to go down and take out their artillery, artillery then do so. But don't just rush all the way across the map risking all of your hit points and even your, your, your life of your tank just to try to kill the artillery. Sometimes it works out, most times it does not. So, number eight, identify fast tanks that might try and flank. So that's where your light tanks come in. Um, they have a few light tanks like the Lukes, the A20. Um, that's pretty much it for them. So really, this team is heavy on tank destroyers. So the idea that they're going to be outflanking us is very, very uh, low, right? But if they are going to flank, this is what's going to flank, right? This Lukes, this A20. In fact, I would even consider this whole uh, platoon, this first platoon, as a flanking platoon because the Martyr 38T has some decent speed. The Lukes certainly has good speed, and the 3J has good speed. So these, these we could see uh, flank, and they're not just lights but they're also mediums. So look at your lights and mediums for that flanking maneuver and kind of think about, well, they are going to be sitting in the middle of the cap. More than likely, they're going to be on a flank, either the left or right flank and coming at you from that direction. So kind of think about the threats and where they might be based on the categories of the tanks and the specifics that you know about that tank. All right, number nine. Upon spotting multiple tanks, assess largest threat first and target that threat until killed. Okay, what do I mean by that? So it's beyond this screen now. We're now in the game and we're starting to see on our mini map a cluster of tanks. And they're coming, let's say they're coming from the left. And it happens to be this platoon. Um, and what do they have? They have a 3J, a Lukes, and they have a Martyr 38T. So what, what tank out of those three would be your biggest threat if you were in an M5A1 Stewart? Well, it's anything that's going to probably be able to do a lot of damage. So to be honest with you, it's probably going to be either the Martyr T or the or the 3J. Well, what tank is more mobile? Because as a light tank, you're pretty mobile. Well, out of these two, the Panzer 3J is the most mobile. So guess what? He is going to be my biggest threat. So if I encounter all three of these tanks at once, and I can't turn around and get the heck out of there, and it's just me then I'm going to take on the 3J first. I'm going to take out my biggest threat first. And if I can take him out, hopefully this Martyr T is still trying to get his gun trained on me. And the Lukes is, is flying around, missing all of his shots because he's too fast to, to lock onto me. And actually, he's locked onto me and he's not using his uh, manual targeting. So he's completely missing me when he shoots. And that's the hope is you're going to you know have some luck with you. These guys don't know what they're doing but you know what you're doing and you take out the biggest threat first. Then, once I've got the 3J killed, I'm going to move on to the Martyr T, Martyr 38T. That's going to be my next target. One, he's easier to pin. He's slower. He can't traverse uh, as fast as I can go around him. So I'm going to take him out next. And then ultimately, if I get him, then I can work on the Lukes, right? Or Lush, however you say this. Um, anyway, that is the uh, threat progression uh, as you see tanks coming at you, right? Is to know which threat is biggest and go after that first. Look to isolate tanks. That's num number 10. Number 10 is look to isolate tanks for easier kills. So when you're in battle and you have that mini map up and you see some reds, you know, you see four or five reds on the right flank, you know, five or six tanks in the middle, and one or two tanks on the on the left, which flank do you want to focus on? 
you want to focus on the left flank because if you can isolate and kill those tanks and get them out then you can work on the next weakest part of the enemy's defense let's say they're all flying at you well you don't want to be in front of the five or six tanks that are coming at you you want to be in front of one or two tanks because they're going to be less likely to kill you as fast so know know how to read your mini map always be aware of map of your mini map and where the enemy is and also be able to try to isolate tanks now i've said this in a previous video and i'll say it again you have to know where your allies are too because if you're the only one over on the left well now it's two against one right and so you need to know where your allies are hopefully some of your allies are on your left side and it's you've got numbers on that and so they're truly isolated otherwise you're the idiot you're the one that's been isolated and you're the one that's about to die so it's not just isolating enemy tanks it's also not trying to get isolated yourself so be aware of where your enemies and your and your allies are with that mini map all right but that's what your next goal would be is to isolate uh and and get kills that way number 11 don't trade damage if you can avoid it meaning if there's a tank in front of you and you see him and he sees you you shoot him and then he shoots you and then you shoot him and he shoots you and yes you eventually kill that tank in front of you because maybe you have faster reload and you knew that right but what did you just do you threw away a lot of hit points that your tank has and now you don't have them for another tank that's going to encounter you right now you're uh, you could be a one shot you could be a couple of shots till death you want to try to save your hit points so what you try to do is don't don't try to encounter tanks out in the open try to face them with you behind cover uh, or at least able to pop out from cover hit them and get behind cover a lot of times i'm shooting tanks i'll pop hit them they'll shoot at me and hit the rock in front of me because i've driven in behind a rock and then i pop back out and hit them again and then i do the same thing and they never land a single shot on me and i've taken them out and i still have full hit points that's what you're striving to do is be a hard kill don't just run out and kill a tank and say oh i got my kill that's great um i, I feel like I've, I've been a success by the way uh, some people will use this kind of metric like if i just get one kill at least i helped my team not lose right well that's a misnomer that's false here's a better metric if you're able to do as many hit points as your tank has in damage then you've helped your team otherwise i don't care if you have five kills and a hundred damage you have not helped your team at all in the game just because you've been able to kill a, a few tanks that somebody left wounded on the battlefield does not make you helpful for your team don't get me wrong it is important to take guns out of the fight so you should go ahead and kill people that you can kill but that doesn't mean that you're actually helping your team win you're really not having a large uh piece of of the win if you're not really doing some portion of damage to the enemy team and by doing as much damage to the enemy team as you have uh, on your tank at least you held your own meaning that let's say uh, in this case i'm in an m5a1 stewart that has 340 hit points then that means I need to try to do 340 hit points of damage every battle. Uh, and if I don't, I haven't really helped my team win, right? Because there's each, each team has a total number of hit points. And that's really how you want to weigh the battle. Not how many kills you had versus somebody else. It's about, it's about how much direct damage you had over somebody else. Now, that's not the way the scoreboard works i get that but if you want to get better at this game you need to understand that concept all right moving on uh use cover to prevent damage we kind of this is kind of an addition to what i just said about number 11 don't trade damage unnecessarily so use that cover to avoid damage uh, obviously that's a good tip number uh number 13 learn the abilities of your tank and use its strengths against your opponents weaknesses so if you know you have a fast tank that can traverse or run around another tank at a faster rate than his gun can turn well then now you're using your tanks 
advantage over that tank's weakness. If he's slow and cumbersome, great. If he has heavy armor, well, then he can get in a place where he can side scrape or reverse side scrape and uh, prevent you from pinning him by covering up his lower plate or wherever his weak spots are. Try to cover that up and prevent you from hitting them. Hitting them. Well, then now he's highlighting his advantage over you as a light tank, right? Because you can't sit there and go toe to toe with a heavy tank. Can't do it, right? So, you know, learn to use your strengths against the opponent's weaknesses. The only way you can do that is to learn these tanks. You don't learn these tanks by playing a tier three one time, moving to a tier four, moving to a tier five, then to a tier six. You have no idea how to be successful at tier three, four, and five because you haven't played enough matches, learned all these tanks and their advantages and disadvantages, uh, and how to exploit their weaknesses. Okay? So you really need to play multiple matches at each tier. You need to learn all these concepts before you move up. All right. Number 14, always look at the mini map. Uh, I've, I've said that probably several times in this video, and I can't say it enough, folks. You have to have map awareness. It is one of the things that makes you a good tank player is just to know where the enemy is and your allies at all times. Number 15, retreat prior to being surrounded. So in our example where I was saying isolate the enemy, well, maybe the enemy has two tanks on the left flank like we mentioned earlier, and you go over to attack them because you feel like they, they are isolated because you have a couple of buddies with you and you find out, oh, there's actually three tanks behind them. Now they're lit and now you can see, well, you might stay there and hold that side a little bit, but if they kill maybe one or two of your allies, it's time to retreat. You're not going to take on five tanks at once. You want to take them on individually. You want to get them isolated as best you can. So you're going to start to retreat if you can, right? Or at least get in a better cover-up position. Uh, so you want to pay attention and you do want to retreat. There's no, there's no shame in retreating. I've heard, I've heard people say, oh, he's a coward. He ran from that side. Well, he's not stupid. I mean, if there's five tanks over there and it's only him, he's better off being a coward. That's the better better way um, to actually uh, maybe fight another day. And in fact, there's been occasions where I've been accused of, of, of running from a fight. And, and at the end of the, the match, I, 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 got, I call it hate mail. I got some hate mail about, oh, you're a coward. You ran from that flank. I said yes, because I was outnumbered six to one. But notice that guess, guess who won the match? We did. Guess who carried the game? I did. Guess who killed all six of those tanks at another point in time? I did. So it's it was it was better for me to allow them to disperse, to get divided, and and not kill them or try to kill them all at one time. And so because I did that, because I ran, I was surviving, and at the end I had an opportunity to take those tanks out in a more isolated situation, which I did, and we actually prevailed. So that wasn't a game where you're like, oh, that guy's a coward. If, if they're making smart decisions in a strategy game, don't beat people up about that. You know, assume that their motives are, are good, right? Um, you might email them and say, hey, why did you run from the left flank? And he said, well, I was, it was six against one. Well, that's, all, that's your answer, right? Not to send them hate mail and say, oh, you're a terrible tanks player, you're a coward. Not necessarily, right? So... There you have it. Um, number 16, high tier, high tier uh, tanks use a concept called tracking as a way to slow enemy progress and reduce the threat level of certain tanks. Now, I'm going to talk in another video about, you know, what's called assisted damage. Uh, and I'm, we're going to talk more in depth about tracking, how to track tanks how to spot tanks and how to get assisted spotted spotting damage. Um, but for now, you need to know that you can, your tracks can be damaged. You do want to shoot at the front or rear flywheel of the frontal track to, to track the tank. And when you do that, you basically knock their track off and, and they have to repair it. They, if they have a repair kit, they have to use that. If they have a repair skill, it'll take a little time, but they will eventually repair it. But all the while they're repairing uh, their tank, they're sitting idle. 
and that gives opportunity for others to hit them. It also gives you time to potentially retreat um, or your allies to retreat. So it is a very, very useful concept in this game. And being able to uh, track tanks is not only a great, uh, a great uh, skill to have at the lower tiers, but up at the upper tiers, um, you got to be able to do it, guys. You got to be able to know how to track tanks, and you got to you got to be willing and able to track them. Uh, because if you don't, you're just not going to have success potentially at the higher tiers. Um, so, and I'm not saying you have to track every tank. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is you have to be able to do it at times uh, in order to allow your team to retreat, maybe to fight at a different uh, at a f different time to to pull out that win, or or you know uh, to really get the assisted damage up where you you you've tracked a you know let's say a, a heavy out in the open, and and boy your teammates will feast on that carcass if you can if you can track him right so. Uh, you know, it really helps you be a, a much, much success, more successful high tier player if you can track tanks. So learn that skill. We'll talk about that in a separate video, but but that is um, that is what I want to mention here in this video. The seventeenth uh, thing that I want to note, and again, these are down here, right? These are things that you can think of after the fact. Run scenarios with each, with 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 you know your teammates, your platoon mates, or other people that play tanks. Run scenarios in your head. Run scenarios constantly, and that helps you get quicker about these threat progressions, especially when tanks are coming at you. What if I had a, uh, a Hetzer and a KV-1 attacking me? Or maybe it's a KV-1S, and they're both coming at me. Who would I attack, right? Uh, what would I do? You know, you know, How would I react to that? Um, run scenarios, and that helps you learn uh, the different tanks. It helps you learn what you do in uh, different situations before you're actually in those situations. Um so hopefully uh, it'll help you qu more quickly uh, kind of speed up your learning process by thinking through scenarios or running through scenarios with uh, hopefully clan mates. If you join a clan or your platoon mates or even yourself in your own head, you know, making up scenarios and running through them. And then number 18, learn the abilities of each tank and adjust for the threat level that they present. Again, as my example, the T-56 tank destroyer is not the same as a, uh, you know, German Hetzer. Uh, they're both tier four TDs, uh, tank destroyers, um, but obviously the Hetzer is much harder to pin, at least from the front. Um, and it can have a derp, du derp gun that, that can do a lot of damage. And so, um, you know, your, your, your biggest, bigger threat there is, is the Hetzer. And there's going to be always some times where it's very clear, and there's going to be other times where it's kind of questionable. Uh, and you will, through through running through scenarios and actually real life experience, you'll kind of learn over time, hey, which tanks do I need to, to be most concerned with and which ones do I need to really, really focus on first. So hopefully this hit video was helpful. If it was, hey, hit that like button. Really appreciate that. If there's something that you thought I missed or would like me to cover in a future video, add a comment. Uh, always uh, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for notification of future videos. As always, I really appreciate your time and I wish you success on the battlefield. Take care, everybody. We'll see you in the next one.